Good morning, Major. Good morning, son. Ha, 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 ha. Well, do you need another hornet? Now on your coochie run. And that's called the Coochie Run, a song about the ugly little war. It was written in South Vietnam in 1966 by Lieutenant Mike Stagg, who wrote the words and is now singing them. Although he may sound like one, Mike Stagg is not a professional singer. He does not sing for money, he sings for his buddy. He is not a rarity in Vietnam either, for this seems to be the singingest war of them all. Every unit, it seems, has its own balladeer to tell its own story. These are some of those stories. These are some of their songs of war. Clear and tied. Coming through. K, 25 miles northeast of Saigon, is the home base of the 173rd Assault Helicopter Company. The troops call them the Robin Hoods because they live in an abandoned plantation nicknamed Sherwood Forest. Now, Sherwood Forest has its own merriment for chopper pilots who work at war all day and then sing all night for the troops. This is called Army Aviation, an original composition of the merriment. As helicopter pilots, they face the Vietcong fire almost every day, yet they joke about the danger. We hope that no one gets hurt, they say, we would make a lousy trio. songs making the rounds now, but one of the most popular is Jolly Green, which pays tribute to the men who fly the Jolly Green Giant, a rescue helicopter that goes after American pilots shot down while on airstrikes over North Vietnam. Airman Dave Stevenson of Rossening, New York, is a pararescue man who flies with a Jolly Green on such missions.
you finally got him spotted, but there's ground fire on the right. All you need is for one to hit you, and you won't be back tonight. Tell that pilot hit a hover, get him out right where he stands. songs of the Vietnam War are original works. Most of them, in fact, are rewrites of familiar melodies and some popular hits of the past. For example, the Battle of New Orleans is now the ballad of the USS St. Francis River. At least over here it is. The St. Francis River, or the Franny, as the crew calls her, is a small Navy rocket-bearing ship that nightly pounds the Viet Cong from offshore. In 1966, we took a little trip along with Captain Mangle and his mighty little ship. We took a few rockets and we took a few beans. By the time we got to Vietnam, we're ready by all means. We fired our rockets, but the VC kept up coming. But there wasn't as many as there was a while ago. We fired the first and they began to run and down the sandy beaches just as fast as they could go. The captain said he didn't give a hang If they didn't want a mighty fire, they did it just the same We held our fires, they come crawling like a cell Then we opened up our forties and we really gave them well They ran through the briars and they ran through the bambles And they ran through the bushes where the rabbits couldn't go They ran so fast but the rocket still caught them And they fell right down under Franny's mighty blow Until our launcher fell to town Then we loaded up Big Bertha And we fired a few more rounds Filled her up with Willie feet And caught her at the pass All that's left to Charlie Is a little patch of well They ran through the briars And they ran through the bambles And they ran through the bushes Where a rabbit couldn't go Ran so fast But the rocket still caught them And they fell right down Under Franny's mighty blow If you don't believe my story about this mighty little ship, then with San Francis River you should take a little trip. The weather is permitting and the seas ain't too high. Ask Charlie about my story when you get to playing nine. We fired our rockets, but the VT kept on coming, but there wasn't as many as there was a while ago. We fired this further and they began to run it down the sandy beaches just as fast as they could go. That was a crewman of the Franny, radioman George Hughes, and those were the words of his buddy, electrician's mate Gordon Acklin. The words of Lieutenant James Moulton of Albuquerque, New Mexico, tell of one of the bloodiest battles of the war, the battle for the Yadrang Valley, the first big encounter for Moulton's outfit, the 1st Cavalry Division. Yadrang produced a major victory for the 1st Cav, and one of the war's most moving songs. I have been Searching for 
another first cavalry man, writes of a different kind of battle in Vietnam, the one between the soldiers and the non-soldiers. He wears a brass nose buckle with a high dome shine. He tells his voice that he always whines. Wears a brand new uniform about every day, picking up checks and handing out pay. of warm tea the soldiers buy the girls who sock them about two dollars a glass and bummy bar 33 is the name of a local beer the troops say that bummy bar is the one beer to have when you're having more than 33 and finally a donut dolly is an american red cross girl together they make up vietnam's version of the eternal triangle Yeah. 
about the song of the Vietnam War. But All My Trials is still a very popular song among the troops here, because I think of the hope that it transfers to all who will listen. All my trials, Lord, soon be over. Let's see now, how many days will it be before I can go home? The song has other meanings to the men. All their trials could be over in one sudden and violent moment, in the blast of a claymore or the burst of a machine gun. It is a hard fact of the war they sing about. Yeah. 
the big hits of the past as well as the present. This is the place to live. The home of the hot hits, Radio High Key. Stay tuned. The radio. to Radio Lai Chi, South Vietnam. Here's another great record from the past. Here is another radio special from Radio Lai Chi. Radio salutes the golden hits of the past.
one who's going places, you have a head start on your future. So the choice is yours. A second term in today's Army represents a chance to get a real foothold on the future. It means getting the kind of specialized training needed for the job that you want. It offers a variety of interesting assignments worldwide, and it provides the opportunity to move ahead fast in the field that you have chosen, calling the shot as a specialist or leader, and earning the respect of your buddy. And you make the choices in education, job, or place of duty. See your brigade career counselor for further information today. Time right now, two minutes before the hour of seven o'clock on. People are getting to where you take your cues right now. That's really amazing, huh? How about that? Let's see if you can do the same thing. Hey, that's really great. Hi, I'm Barbara, and I want to invite you to listen for the Clara Barton Show each Sunday and Wednesday night from 7.05 until 9. We'll be taking requests and dedications by phone. So join us, won't you? Sneaky sound of music, isn't it? Awful sneaky sounding guy. The mosquito is probably the smallest foe you will encounter while in Vietnam. He spreads malaria and encephalitis. These diseases can be very dangerous if not treated in the early stage of development. Don't wait until you get a disease to start protecting yourself. All the protection you need is available to you. Take your anti-malaria pill weekly. Spray insect repellent on exposed skin surfaces. Sweep under your mosquito net and spray enclosed areas liberally with an aerosol bomb. Make sure that you don't become a casualty of a pesky mosquito. The next voice you will hear will be that of Speaker of the House, Sam Rayburn, who will introduce President Truman, who will speak from the clerk's desk. Mr. Speaker. Just a moment. Let me present you, will you, Harry? Sure. Members of the Congress, I have the great pleasure and the high privilege of presenting to you the President of the United States. Responsibilities. 
We must carry on. Our departed leader never looked backward. He looked forward and moved forward. That is what he would want us to do. That is what America will do. So much blood has already been shed for the ideals which we cherish and for which Franklin Delano Roosevelt lived and died that we dare not permit even a momentary pause in the hard fight for victory. Today, the entire world is looking to America for enlightened leadership to peace and progress. Such a leadership requires vision, courage, and tolerance. It can be provided only by a united nation deeply devoted to the highest ideals. With great humility, I call upon all Americans to help me keep our nation united in defense of those ideals which have been so eloquently proclaimed by Franklin Roosevelt. I want in turn to assure my fellow Americans and all of those who love peace and liberty throughout the world that I will support and defend those ideals with all my strength and all my heart. That is my duty and I shall not shirk it so that there can be no possible misunderstanding both Germany and Japan can be certain beyond any shadow of a doubt that America will continue to fight for freedom until no vestige of resistance remains. We are deeply conscious of the fact that much hard fighting is still ahead of us. Having to pay such a heavy price to make complete victory certain, America will never become a party to any plan for partial victory. To settle for merely another temporary respite would surely jeopardize the future security of all the world. Our demand has been and it remains unconditional surrender. From the American frontier with the Weston family and Daniel Boone in the exciting days following the American Revolution. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin from CBS World News. A press association has just announced that President Roosevelt is dead. The president died of a cerebral hemorrhage. All we know so far is that the president died at Warm Springs in Georgia. 